Okay, well, uh, welcome to the references this webinar series. Today we're going to go over Easware. Um, I am when I introduce myself, I am the international marketing specialist. Uh, we have Zach Center, senior software engineer. Hi. And Christopher Peter, senior engineer as well. All right, well, I want to say that Easware is the easiest way to view your geospatial photos and videos on Google Earth through a friendly interface. On the screen, you will see the interface of Easware on the left uh, bottom side. And then the video player or photos on the top. It could be either VLC or Windows Media Player. Then you will have your track log um, over here. And then you can click in any point to, to get to see all the data embedded in, the, in each video or file. Then uh, as a Google Earth plugin is where we'll decode the data from geotag videos and photos captured. It could be either in process with Media Mapper Mobile or BMS Retreat or in post process with Media Geotag. Um, we will have webinars specifically for Media Mapper Mobile or Media Geotag coming up. We have one last week for BMS Retreat that you can go mm -hmm. online and just watch our webinar for that specific. Item. Um, so here, uh, the way that ISWA will work is uh, extracts the data associated with the media and outputs into a log file containing valuable NEMIA and GPS information with a track log alongside the imagery. So you know exactly where the videos and photos were captured. I just want to mention that NEMIA stands for a National Marine Electronics Association. And NEMIA is combined in electrical and data specifications for communications between marine electronics, uh, such as echo sounders, sonars, anemometer, gyro compass, autopilot, GPS receivers, and many other types of instruments. So whether you're flying over corridor pipeline, pipeline or patrolling a specific animal on the ground, is where we'll let you see the videos and photos you capture on a map, allowing simple analysis, recording, and response. So now Zach will show you a demo of his work and see how everything works out. <coughs> All right, so I'll just take this and find the mouse here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just start up Isware here really quick. We've got our licensing thing here. Uh, let's see, so I'm already licensed and ready to go. Okay, so Isware pops up. Here's our main window. And then we've got Google Earth launching here. Let me just add a bit of media that I prepared earlier. So, I'll go into my sample video here really quick and load up one of our older flights. So, the map will immediately zoom to the first video that you start have, uh, you've got going here. So, this is out, uh, out, in the, uh, out in the bit of farmland here. So, as we're looking around, we see here's our full track. You've got the correct course and everything. I can click on a point. I've got all of the metadata that was plugged into this video at this time. So we've got our video time with the point I clicked on, latitude, longitude, let's see if we've got anything interesting. Oh, we've got um, our AGL sensor here, which is a laser pointed downward so we can tell how many meters we are above the ground. We had our boreal gas sensor plugged in so we can tell what our parts per million of methane is and then the confidence value of the sensor and uh, some other internal light values and everything over here. And then finally, we have a QR code. And anyone watching at home, you can take a cell phone uh, camera with the uh, QR code reader, scan this image here, and then get directions to the spot out in the field. This is useful if you're uh, you know, in the office and need to send out a technician really quick. And then we're just going to play the video from this spot on the track which launches uh, our little media window here. Let's get the size down to something manageable. Ah, and then you can see 
on the map our moving cursor here, which will let you know where on the map the helicopter or camera or whatever platform you have is as it's going along uh, through the video. And then as we change video positions, it will jump the cursor forward a bit and jump it back again and then hold up. See, so it'll go back there. And, you know, you can also do the same thing on the track. If you want to see a later point in the, in the video, you can click there. It'll jump the video ahead and jump the cursor ahead. The time code here is your uh, video time code. Um, so let's uh, take a look at a few more videos. So let's see, we've got a dairy farm drive, which I think has a little bit more metadata, and also three videos. So we can show off the playlist a bit. Loading. So now the map readjusts itself to get everything in frame. And then we can head down here and look at this drive we did around a dairy farm. We can click on a video in the playlist, have it open up here. And is it going? There it goes. It'll move along the track, and you can see that our GPS is fairly accurate, you know, to within at least a lane of traffic. This will, of course, depend on the quality of the GPS you have plugged into your, uh, into your uh, whole kit. And then let's see what else can we show off. We've got uh, a couple more video tracks. Let's just... Add in something with a bit more, uh, a bit more going on. We've got a couple of videos here where uh, one of our technicians was pointing a laser out the window, and then you can see the associated laser data here. So you can see they're driving around this little oval here, and these blue lines coming out are the the, the associated laser data. So you can see. At this point, around the uh, on the five here, they fired a laser out the window and pointed it to this part of the ground. And you can then also play the video from that spot where they were firing off the lasers at the uh, at the trees around the oval. You'll notice these paddles here, which are our our method of displaying feature triggers. So whatever. You you fire a laser out. There's also a handheld feature device where you can uh, click a button really quick, and it will drop a feature of interest on the track. So that as you're looking at the map, you can say, "Oh, this is very interesting. We should look at this later." And speaking of features of interest, we also have a bit more of an advanced uh, feature system which hooks into VMS Mobile, another program of ours, where you can define your own custom colors and custom uh, feature text. So, for example, we have defined that red is our alert status, and then here you can see we've defined a custom color, and we've added a bit of custom text to let you know that it is an alert. Same thing here. We've got yellow is caution, and green is clear. In VMS Mobile, which is another product we'll probably have a web uh, seminar on someday, you, you can define uh, any number of custom colors and features to be shown on the map later on. And as you're doing your drive, you can switch between the different colors as a mode. Let's just play at the start of the clear bit there, and then you can see your track cursor going along. Now we can also show still images along our along our uh, map here in Isware. This is from a device called the DMRT, which is in essence this platform with a camera, a GPS, and a laser rangefinder all attached to it and facing the same direction. And using this, it's sort of like a bit of survey equipment that you can use to take a picture of something, say from 
the top of this dam here all the way down, all the way down at a target down here. And then the laser and gyroscope and everything will make sure that the image is there. The, this little blue line here is pointed at uh, whatever you're pointing at, you know, when you're out taking the data. And then if we look at the image itself, we can see that they were aiming it at this building here in the center. And that's what is then reflected in Google Earth. Oh, there we go. So there's our image. There's the video, or there's the uh, building they were pointed out next to these uh, solar panels back here. And then, oh, here is the blue line going to the building and coming from our shooting position here. And then you can see along the path all of the associated metadata. And you can perform a lot of math on this. You can say, oh, where the altitude of everything is, where the latitude longitude of your target is, you know, what AGL you had, all the different, uh, you know, laser pitch roll and yaw, what range everything is, you know, what camera you were using, your focal length, and then again, a QR code, which will give you map directions to this place on the ground here. Let's see. Well, I think that about does it for all the different types of media we have so far. Another thing I could show you is how uh, you can then launch your video in VLC Media Player here. There it goes. The one advantage of VLC is that it has a few more features around the bottom here, and it has its own incorporated uh, video and audio codecs so that you don't have to rely on the inbuilt system codecs of Windows. And if you have a video that doesn't run, you can always try it in VLC and see if, uh, if, if their codecs work better for you. Let's see, we also have, let's load up this one instead here really quick. You can have the cursor follow you in Google Earth. So as the video is playing, you'll notice that the Google Earth window is following this cursor as it moves along here. So you can center your view on where you are. Oh, let's see. You can turn whether or not to display QR codes, whether to display photos in Nader view, whether to have your moving cursor here, which will then turn off again. Uh, the different uh, GPS modes, you can have it tied to the AGL sensor of, uh, of the laser that you're pointing at the ground, the GPS of the onboard GPS sensor, or you can just clamp everything to the ground. Let's set it to AGL really quick. So you can see. Well, unfortunately, this one was taken on the ground, so you won't see too much of an elevation change. Let's see. Uh, you can also set if you if you have uh, a DMRT with a laser that wasn't exactly accurate, like let's say you were out in the field and your 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 laser pointer's compass was off by you know five degrees to the east, you could then correct for that over here. And then there's also an automatic setting where we'll try to figure it out. Let's see. There's port settings. So the interface between Isware, VLC, and Google Earth. If you'd like to edit any of the ports it uses to get around your, you know, custom network settings, you can do that as well. And then we can also change icons and colors for the track, the photo icons, the laser rangefinder, audio notes, and the cursor. So let's say we wanted our laser to be a slightly different icon here. We could go through our giant icon list and let's say we were tagging bicyclists instead of trees we could change that out really quick and then now we are using little bicyclists as our laser targets rather than the uh, box we were earlier so i think that is just about everything and we're wondering if you had any questions. Yeah, so we'll open up for questions. Um, so you can just write the question on, on the box in your software.
programming tool. Yeah. Mostly because it uses Google Earth, and I think most of our audience are familiar with what Google Earth provides. Yeah, the one nice thing about this is that Google Earth has quite a bit better performance than some of the other map players we've used. So we had a data set that I didn't show it to you today because it's far too huge, but where you have hundreds of thousands of data points, and because of the different partitioning it uses, you can have all of that display smoothly in Google Earth where it will only load up certain sectors of the map. You can kind of see that if you were to, let's say, zoom this map out. Uh -huh. Yeah, you'll see we've got our fully detailed track with all of our icons and everything. And then as we zoom out, slowly you'll see these disappear and hide. Now they're just being represented by video icons. This allows us to say, oh, well, we're very zoomed out, so we're going to abstract a bit of the data and not actually show any of it at this, at this height because it would slow down the system. And as you zoom in, you get to see your data again. Uh, this allowed us to help out a customer who had, oh, uh, yeah, just uh, quite a lot of data. And they weren't able to view it in, say, ArcMap, for example, because ArcMap will try to render everything all at once. Mm -hmm. so let's see. Other than that, Google has um, pretty... So, oh. Sam, have we have a question? I will read it aloud. It says, how do you get the best results when trying to capture stills out of your video? Um, well, I would recommend, OK, so I just had a bit of a bug today. So uh, yeah. the most updated version will have what was going on. But I would recommend using the feature trigger. There, we sell this table with a, with a button on top, basically, that plugs into the VMS. And then as you're flying along, if you notice your camera is pointed at something interesting, you just hit the feature trigger button. And then it is where we have a setting where it will march through the video and find all the time codes and the features of interest that you've dropped and then pull a screenshot from that. Also, if you want intervalometry, let's say you were building some sort of mosaic or something or you just wanted an image every couple of seconds, we also have a setting for that as well. So I guess it would depend mostly on what you really need the images for. But if you're just flying along and you want to say, oh, I want to take a picture of that thing, then you would use the feature trigger and then pull out your feature trigger uh, images later on. And is that something that you can do with Media Mapper Mobile as well? Uh, you can, yes. Media Mapper Mobile will have inside of it its own picture capturing system. Mm -hmm. You can also use VMS Mobile to drop more detailed pictures features, which will have a bit more data attached to them. Good. Thank you. Uh, the second question says, so Eastward must be licensed, but is there a free viewer that can play back Eastward content? OK, so is where it, it does need to be licensed, yes. But we do offer a seven-day free demo, which you can use to try out our software. And other than that, there's not really another free viewer to view any of the content. Uh, all of this content was encoded using the VMS, which I think comes bundled with a version of Isware? Right. I think yeah, I'll have to talk get, yeah, if you get the uh, basic package of VMS 323, you, it comes with a seat of, of a license of Isware. Oh, OK, yeah. And then the only other way to make encoded media like this would be to use Media Mapper Mobile, which has its own internal viewer on the mobile device. So whenever you eh, get a VMS or basically buy anything that allows you to geotag video, it'll, it'll come with uh, some sort of viewer that you can use. But if you want extra seats or extra people in your office or workspace to be able to work simultaneously, then you're going to need an extra license of Isware. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we have another question. It says, if, can I use photos or videos geotag with other parts besides red hands? Uh, well, for photos, yes. Anything that encodes into the exit header of a photo, the, uh, the little metadata chunk at the top, most, uh, most cameras will have that ability. Then Isware will pick that up perfectly fine and display it on the map. 
But mm -hmm. our encoding methods put a little bit more data into it. So, for example, with a camera, you only really get latitude and longitude, and if you're lucky, maybe altitude. Mm -hmm. uh, with our DMRT kit, you'll get latitude, longitude, altitude, pitch roll yaw, and a laser range, which is then used to draw more information on the map. So with our hardware, you'll see a lot more information, like you know you saw with the DMRT images earlier. But yes, if you just have any camera that encodes GPS information, you will be able to see it in ISWARE. So basically, good for photos with little yeah. data, but not quite for the video. Not for videos, because as of yet, there is no real way to encode metadata with a video. Right. outside of like the government KLV encoding thing, which is pretty cost prohibitive, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, we have one more. It says, um, can Eastware work with video encoded using a, how do you say this, Horita? Yeah, Horita. Horita GPS number three system? I'm not familiar with that particular GPS receiver, but if it outputs an EMEA, um, we can actually capture that with a VMS unit. If oh, yeah. it's a uh, GPS logger, we can, uh, we can associate the video with the GPS track post-process using Media Geotagger. Yeah, I could probably show you, let me just close this really quick, we'll show you what, uh, what we mean by EMEA here. And let's say, uh, no, maybe the oval one of those, and then we'll have a yeah. What the file looks file. like, right? Yeah. Yes, because so, I heard of me, it was so hard for me to understand the nouns. Yeah. So here is our Namia text file, which is all the different sensors that were in the vehicle, and they're all attached to the VMS, which uh, hopefully you can cover VMS uh, webinar. There's another webinar out there explaining that, but they all get uh, put together into this one giant uh, Vimeo log, which is in chronological order. And you can see our remote feature trigger uh, thing where you can click a button and then have it drop a start and end uh, feature area. And then you can see, um, oh, there's a laser, and here's the GPS, and here's our video time code to keep everything synced up. So, yeah, if your GPS outputs, is it RS-232 that plugs into the, yeah, an RS-232 um, signal, basically, that we can plug into the VMS and then get a valid NMEA string at the other end, then yes, it will work. And we'll be happy to follow up with you and just make sure that you have outputs what you need for, to yeah. use this word with. Our next question says, so if I capture media for a client, if they wish to view the media when not with me, will it be for the client to acquire their own licensed copy of Eastward, correct? So does the client need to buy Eastward? Well, if they want to use it for more than seven days, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but let me say that usually in this type of cases, what we do is we, so we charge uh, 250 for the first seat, but then if you have clients or any other seats after that, it's uh, usually 99. But like we uh, we were promoting for this webinar, we are actually gonna go with 50% off. So if you are interested in this, um, you have any more questions, let us know afterwards, and then so we will drop 250 to 125 for your first license, and then about 45 bucks for your second or third, and any other ones coming up after that. Yeah. Um, then we have uh, NEMEA encoded in audio track just like BMS 333. Uh, yes. So the workflow for this is the you would you would encode something in, with the BMS 333 into the audio track of your video, and then is where out the other end will take that video, pull apart the audio track, remove the the uh, or not remove but process the uh, VMS's audio signal in the uh, in the audio track and then convert that back into the MIA, which is where it can then process into data points which go onto the map. 
So yes, Isware was designed to ingest VMS encoded videos. Great. Um, he actually saying that uh, Horita, Horita GPS tree is actually the equivalent of VMS tree to tree. Ah, well, that it might encode it into the video by a different means that we're not quite prepared for, unfortunately. So if if that GPS device encodes the GPS into the video by some different means, then we won't be able to pick it up on our end. But if it outputs RS-232, we can plug it into a VMS. So there is there is that. Is there a file size limit? Um, no, there isn't really a file size limit, but we do recommend that afterwards you cut the videos into manageable chunks just for convenience sake. It makes it a little more reliable and copying it, you know, around to different hard drives. So if you have one giant, you know, 20 gig, six hour video, if, if there's ever a, an error during copying somewhere, you have to start all over again. But if you cut it into two gigabyte, 15 minute chunks, then if there's ever an error along the way, you can just correct that messed up part and then everything else will be fine. And it's a little more convenient. So you can use larger files. I just wouldn't recommend it. Also, Isware will, I think I put it in this most recent version, if you have a contiguous set of videos, so one video ends, at the exact same UTC and GPS where another video starts or within a certain buffer time and space, it will skip to the next video. So if you take one giant video, chop it into segments and start watching one of the segments, when it finishes that segment, it will detect the segment next in line and then continue playing. So you can still watch your entire six hour video as one big thing, even if it's technically smaller chunks. No, it's Leo. Okay. okay. He said, makes sense and thank you. Yep. All right. So um, we're getting close to wrap up the webinar. Is there anything we would like to add before we say goodbye to our attendees? Oh, well, there's the seven day demo on the web page. Uh, you can go right. to uh, redinsystems.com, poke around for Isware. Yeah, I'm going to look and show you really quick. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I have the mouse still, don't I? Yeah. Okay. So, Redhead System, mm -hmm. really quick. So there's our right nice corporate web page. There's Isware. And here is a tutorial video. That, yep, uh, we have that tutorial. And then... Oh, the demo yeah, somewhere. I yeah, I just want to show you how to get trial. And then add to card. Yeah, and then you would fill out a little bit of personal information, and then you're good to go. Oh, can you see the snail trail for hours worth of video on Google Earth, or must you look at small chunks? Well, it all puts everything together, actually. So, sorry, if I go back to Isware and I add, going back to our dairy farm drive, if I add all three videos, or all three chunks of the larger whole, then... Where's Google Earth? Then it places all of the open videos on the map. So we can see that we've got everything that we've opened today up here. And then there's this drive around the dairy farm, which is technically one contiguous drive cut into three chunks. So it will show up on the map. So we can see maybe where the end, where one chunk ends. And another, another begins. I'll just mute that really quick. Find our, oh, oh there's a screenshot. Oh, <laughs> forgot to set the altitude back. There we go. Oops, well, oh, maybe it's Google Earth that's having a bit of a problem today. But yeah, so this is all one contiguous run, which is actually composed of a couple of parts. Yeah. 
he said that's great. Thank ah, you again. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So we're gonna uh, just thanks everybody for coming into our webinar. Um, we have this series of webinars just showing different types of products and hardware and software that we provide that it would allow you to geotag your videos and photos and look at it on the map. Um, like Zach said, you have the Eastward trial for seven days. And then just company if you're interested in some of our offers with a 50% discount. Um, thank you very much and have a great day.